Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Vaishnavi and today's session is going to be a quick look on instruments in ENT. Since you're all nearing to the NEET PG examination, I just wanted to give you a brief outline of the instruments that are commonly used. So I will not be going into the depth of each instrument, how it is used, why it is used, what is the procedure, but we are going to just have a basic idea of what is the instrument and name given to that instrument so that at least you should have a, you know, flash memory in your examination with what as to what this instrument is and what it is used for. So without wasting any time here, let's go and dive into the session and let's understand about the instruments. So first and foremost, we're going to do the tonsillectomy instruments because tonsillectomy is a basic procedure that you need to know as a third, uh, as a graduate, MBBS graduate. So you see that this is a Boyle Davis mouth gag. This is called as the Boyle stung blade and this is the Davis mouth gag. So this assembly together is done and with this, the mouth is opened. So this is your tongue blade, which will help in retracting the jaw downwards. And this is the upper end, which will retract the upper jaw upwards. So you will be able to open the mouth. This is stabilized on a bipod so that there is no movement at all during surgery. That bipod has got multiple rings in which you will hook the mouth gag. This bipod is called as the Draffin's bipod. And this Draffin's bipod is stabilized on a plate which is kept below the neck of the patient. This plate is called as the Meg Oren's plate. So what is the name given to that? It is called as the Meg Oren's plate. So first and foremost for tonsillectomy, for mouth opening and stabilization, what are you going to use? You are going to use a Boyle Davis mouth gag. This Boyle Davis mouth gag is stabilized with the help of a Draffin's bipod. And this bipod is stabilized on the McGoran's plate. So this is the first instrument. The second one is called as the Mollison's pillar retractor with the tonsillar dissector. So do you see this end? This end is used for dissecting the tonsil from its bed. So this is the superior constrictor. This superior constrictor forms the bed of the tonsil. And this is your tonsillar tissue. Now, when you're doing the surgery, you want to create a plane and separate the tonsil from its underlying superior constrictor muscle. So this end is used for dissecting it from the superior constrictor muscle. The other end is an anterior pillar retractor. So we all know that the tonsil lies between the anterior pillar and the posterior pillar. So to retract the anterior pillar, we use the other end of this instrument, which is called as the anterior pillar retractor. So this is called as the anterior pillar retractor. So Mollison's tonsillar dissector, which is used for dissecting the tonsil on one end, and the other end is used for retracting the anterior, anterior pillar. So this is a pillar retractor and dissector. This is Vogue's forceps. Now, when you want to separate the upper pole of the tonsil from its bed, you need to make an incision or you need to hold and create a plane between these two tissues. So to create a plane between this, you use Vogue's forceps. Now, there can be forceps which can have tooth and there can be forceps which will not have tooth. So typically to make this incision and to separate the upper pole of the tonsil from its bed, you are going to use this Vogue's toothed forceps. For further dissection where you need blunt dissection, you can do with a blunt forceps. So this is a Vogue's tooth forceps. Then when there is an excessive fibrosis where you can't dissect the tonsil from the underlying bed with the help of only a dissector, you need sharp scissors to cut it from the underlying base. These scissors are called as medicine bomb scissors. So what is it called as? It's called as medicine bomb scissors. The next instrument is called as the Eve's tonsillar snare. So what is the function of this Eve's tonsillar snare? This Eve's tonsillar snare 
cuts and crushes the lower pole of the tonsil so once you have dissected the upper pole of the tonsil and reached up till the lower pole there is a small pedicle to which it is attached so to remove this pedicle you have to crush and cut it so you will pass a snare you will pass this end of the snare around that pedicle of the tonsil and you are going to pull the snare so once you pull the snare you are cutting the tonsillar tissue from its bed so this is called as the eaves tonsillar snare the next one is called as dennis brown tonsil holding forceps so what is this dennis brown tonsil holding forceps you need a forceps to pull the tonsil medially so to pull the tonsil towards the midline so that you can create a plane and you can pass your instruments between the tonsil and its bed you need a holding forceps this forceps is called as the dennis brown tonsil holding forceps so you will hold it and you will pull the tonsil medially now whenever there is a bleeding you want to suck the suck the bleeding so this suction tube is called as the yankur's suction so this instrument is used for suctioning of the blood this is called as the yankur's suction then if there is a bleeding obviously you will expect a bleeding to happen from the tonsillar artery or the peritonsillar vein so you will have to hold the bleeding point and pass a ligature till the bleeding point and ligate it so this artery forceps is called as the birket's straight artery forceps but in the tonsillar fossa bed it is curved sometimes there is a possibility that the straight artery forceps may not be able to reach till the bleeding point then you will use a curved forceps this curved forceps is called as the nagus curved artery forceps so this is called as the nagus curved artery forceps once you have held the bleeding point say this is the bleeding vessel you have held it between the ends of your artery forceps you have to slide a knot or a thread to go from the mouth until that bleeding point and ligate it so obviously your fingers cannot go till inside to put that knot in the tonsillar fossa so you need a slider that can slide that knot until the fossa so this instrument is called as the nagus knot slider so do you see here there is a u shaped structure here so this is called as the nagus knot slider so these are the three instruments that are used commonly whenever you have bleeding after tonsillectomy during tonsillectomy where you want to apply a ligature or where you want to ligate the blood vessels so the birket straight artery nagus curved artery and the nagus knot slider then the next instrument is used for adenoidectomy so the same procedure the what you do for tonsillectomy mouth is opened with the help of boyle davis mouth gag draffen's bipod is used to stabilize it and it is kept on the megoran's plate this instrument that is used for removing the adenoid is called as st clair thompson adenoidectomy curette so you see there are two parts of this curette there is one part which is without cage and there is one part with cage the one with cage is used in the initial part of the surgery for removing larger chunks of the tissue but the one without cage is done used when you are almost near the end where you are removing just the tonsillar remnants from its bed
कल्याण डोर बंद से so the one without cage is used when you are almost near the remnant of the tonsil near the eustachian tubal area where you don't want trauma so since the one without cage cause this is a traumatic it doesn't cause trauma it is used to remove the remnants and whenever you are near the eustachian tube so that you prevent any trauma to the eustachian tube so this is the use of without cage with cage is used in the initial part of surgery where you want to engage a large chunk of adenoid tissue you don't want it to get aspirated so in the initial part for removing the larger chunk uh, for removal of larger chunks of tissue you are going to use the one with cage so i hope you guys understood the difference with cage and without cage that is used for adenoidectomy the name of the instrument is called as st clair thompson adenoidectomy curet so it is held like a di dagger it is passed trans orally from the mouth into the nasopharynx and then it is in slow curettage movements the adenoid is curated from its bed now this is a common ent opd instrument this is called as the bull slam and this is called as the head mirror the bull slam consists of a bulb and the bulb inside is a 100 watt bulb the head mirror is having a mirror that will converge the light rays coming from this bulb on to the object that you want to focus whether it is the ear whether it is the nose whether you want to throw so it is a convex lens which will focus the light it has got a diameter a central aperture of 2 cm and the radius together is 9 cm so the focal length of this is 9 into 2 which makes it 18 cm so why are we interested in the focal length so the object of interest the object where you want to focus your vision on should be at a distance of 18 cm 18 to 20 18 to 24 25 so that you will have a good vision or good illumination so this is about the bull slam and the head mirror the next instrument is called as the otoscope this otoscope will give you a better clarity and better visualization of the entire external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane so when you put it and see through the eyepiece you will be able to see if there is any pathology in the canal like otitis externa or any tumor or a polyp and you can also see the tympanic membrane for perforation for redness for any disease etc to this you can also connect a siegel's bulb so with this you can assess the mobility of the tympanic membrane you can spray powdered medications you can elicit a fistula test so these are the different uses of otoscope not just visualization of the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane it can also be used for all these purposes now this instrument that you see here is called as the simpson's oral syringe this simpson's oral syringe is used for a procedure which is called as syringing so in this syringing we place a the set we use normal water body temperature water of 37 degree centigrade and then we direct this water filled syringe into the external auditory canal directing it towards the posterior superior canal wall so when you direct it towards the posterior superior canal wall you are not causing direct entry over the tympanic membrane and you are causing no trauma to the tympanic membrane so this is directed towards the posterior superior canal wall so if there is a wax or there is a foreign body the water goes behind it builds up pressure behind the foreign body and causes expulsion of the wax or foreign body 
Now the water used is of the body temperature, which is 37 degrees centigrade. If you use either warm water or cold water, what will happen? The patient will have caloric reaction. So what is caloric reaction? The temperature changes that happen in the canal are transmitted to the middle ear through thermal currents. And that is going to in turn to the lateral semicircular canal. And when there is stimulation of lateral semicircular canal, the patient can have vertigo and nystagmus. So to prevent this vertigo and nystagmus, you will not use either warm or cold current. You will use it normally body temperature current. So this syringing is used only when you have non-organic foreign bodies or wax. This is contraindicated if you have a perforation, if there is a history of CSOM, if there is a cardiac patient with a history of vasovagal syncope, if there is otitis externa, if there is otomycosis, this syringing procedure is contraindicated. But please remember the name of this instrument, which is called as the Simpson's oral syringe. Now, this procedure where you see that we're making an incision on the tympanic membrane to make a hole in the tympanic membrane, we call this as myringotomy. And uh, for doing this myringotomy, we use an instrument. This instrument is called as Joseph's myringotome. There are many types of myringotomes. But the one that you see here is called as the Joseph's myringotome, which is used for performing myringotomy. Now, if you identify this procedure, this procedure is nothing but grome insertion. So once you have a patient with serous otitis media, you will do myringotomy and you will also insert a grome. So the procedure that you see here is called as myringotomy with grome insertion. So these are the basic instruments related to your otology. We will have one more session in the coming week where I will do further instruments related to ENT, a quick session like this. So this is a quick 10 to 15 minute session so that you can have a quick look at the instruments that are there for your ENT. We will come back again and I will see you again.